Anthony, Assyria has been uh, all but forgotten except by history students until Saddam Hussein uh, recently revealed that his personal hero is Nebuchadnezzar, king of ancient Assyria. Uh, why the interest now in a long gone civilization? Steve, by referring first of all to a prophecy in the book of Micah, the 8th century BC prophet Micah, because most people are aware of the prophecy by which he announced the birthplace of Messiah. In the fifth chapter, most people I think know, that Bethlehem was designated the place where the Messiah would be born. But the amazing thing is that only three verses later in that very same chapter, in verses 4, 5, and 6 of Micah 5, we find a time there mentioned where Israel will live in peace, being restored to the land of Israel. And at the same time, it is said that the Messiah is going to waste the land of Assyria and actually help to restore the people to a state of freedom from war. But you see, at the time of Jesus, when he was here in his earthly ministry, there was no Assyrian emperor, empire around at all. And so here's a remarkably challenging prophecy which says that the Messiah himself is going to deal with the Assyrians at the end time. And our focus has moved rather naturally to the Middle East because we have Saddam Hussein, you said, uh, recreating, in a sense, the ancient uh, empire of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Assyria, king of Babylon. This remarkable prophecy now comes into focus in a new way. That is a significant event when Iraq invaded Kuwait. I think it's important to say that uh, none of what has happened in the Middle East to date is actually a fulfillment of any prophecy known to me, certainly. Hmm. The interesting thing is that uh, Babylon, though, is being rebuilt. Now, this, again, creates a, a very fascinating situation for students of biblical prophecy. May I mention uh, some of the biblical evidence for the reappearance of the city of Babylon? The first point would be this that in Isaiah 13 we find that Babylon is going to fall at the time of the day of the Lord. Now the day of the Lord, as, as all students of the Bible know, is yet future. It's a time when Christ returns to set up his kingdom on the earth. But Babylon apparently is prominent at that time because it falls not only in 539 BC, as we know it fell anciently, but it falls in, in this chapter in Isaiah definitely at the time of the day of the Lord. In fact, I'll read uh, Isaiah 13, 19. It says this, Babylon, the beauty of the kingdoms, the glory of the Chaldeans' pride will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Hmm. It will undergo entirely the, an, an entire destruction then along the lines of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Babylon as a city is being rebuilt at this time, which uh, I suppose we should mention, that is a, a very well a very well validated fact. Uh, a recent popular uh, television show did show some uh, some scenes of the city, people walking around in the city. So it apparently is it is being rebuilt or or is completed. I, I think it perhaps is in the process at this point. And that is is a significant event in terms of Bible prophecy. I think it probably is. Again, I think we need to stress that it doesn't tell us, the Bible doesn't tell us, and, and current events don't tell us at all the chronology of this matter. The fact that Babylon is being rebuilt simply lets us know that the sorts of things that are described in the Bible can now happen in a way that they couldn't before because Babylon wasn't even there. Let me mention that in Isaiah 14, the next chapter, we find that Babylon is going to be destroyed at the time when the Israelites are being restored again, a point that we mentioned earlier. Now you see, Israel was never restored in the way in which this chapter describes it, finally and fully. It was never uh, um, restored at the time when Babylon was destroyed in BC times. And so what you have in this description is something, frankly, that most Bible students recognize has not been fulfilled. And the logical implication of that is that it has yet to be fulfilled. So with Babylon then being destroyed in the future, clearly the reappearance of Babylon as a city uh, creates a whole lot of new possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anthony, I want to, to take us on to uh, another question we want to ask you today. And uh, I suppose this is the one that people most are curious about wanting to know the future and, and maybe there's a tendency to, to stretch things a bit when we try to provide an answer but uh, are there certain events that we can anticipate happening in the Middle East uh, you know our attention is focused there now with what's gone on since August the invasion of Kuwait uh, at the risk of, of stepping uh, over those bounds uh, is there anything you can tell us about what we might anticipate next in the Middle East situation? Well, that's a challenging question, Stephen. I think I'm going to back out to some extent because a lot of damage, I think, has been done to Bible prophecy by those who have set dates and have claimed more than we really can claim. I don't think, as I said earlier, that anything that's happened so far is directly a fulfillment of a prophecy. But indirectly, it's interesting because it means that we're setting the stage now for some of the things that apparently do have to happen, like the fall of Babylon, 
and the attack of Assyria, that whole empire, that Assyrian Iraqi empire, if you like, on Israel. Now that seems to be in the picture in many prophecies in the Bible. Now that is now in the offing, possibly. But we don't know at all whether the present leader of Iraq will be ins instrumental in carrying out that attack. All we know is that these things are now possible in a way that they weren't. I mean, this whole area of the world was unknown to most people until the beginning of August, you know, when Saddam Hussein is attack. Now, prophecy students are directed uh, almost feverishly to this area mm -hmm. because so much of what they've been reading has been shadowy and vague in the past and is now taking on new meaning since all of these realities, like Babylon itself, the actual existence of a powerful Iraqi Assyrian empire, if you like, has come about. Um, but I think we should add, though, that we cannot possibly say that there's a Bible verse which describes the attack of Saddam Hussein into Kuwait, for example. It simply doesn't exist.